First big problem to escape side control is placing your hand on the outside arm. It's on its far away. We don't want that hand close to the neck or in front of the shoulder. You can get wrist lock, you can get the elbow pushed out of the way, um, and you can also just get cross-faced forever. So let's fix that, okay? Instead, we're gonna focus on our elbows. When our arms are compressed, we're gonna use our elbows and not our hands. You can use your hands when they're straight, but when your arms are bent, you wanna have more of the force on your elbows instead of towards your hand. Look at this plank. The elbow is much stronger here to hold this position than if I try to do a tricep extension, it's much harder. So we start getting out of there, and then the second thing is this. Your leg gets stuck. Oh, you can't pull the foot out. You're trying to get the clothes guard or wherever, and you get stuck in this position here. I'm sitting up so you can see it clearly. All right, so the solution, false grip on the outside arm, elbows tucked in. We're using the elbow. We capture one leg. Then we bring the foot across, the knee across rather, place the foot on the floor, right? And then get a nice angle. So let's break that down, all the details. So if we use the, the hand in the correct position, it actually gives us better leverage with our elbow, where this guy cannot smash my elbow because it's a, it's a bone. Okay, if I try to push with my hands from here, it's a tricep extension. Watch the difference if I push with my hand versus keeping the elbow tucked in. All right, when the elbow's tucked in, it's, it's actually pretty efficient just to get your knee and elbow connected and escape the hip away. Once I do that, trap the foot, and then we start to pass on. Now, when I trap this foot, I'll demonstrate here in a second with another angle, the knee comes through, but immediately the foot is on the floor as soon as I can. Um, this is where people get stuck. They try to pull this foot, this knee to their chest over and over again, and it's difficult. The more horizontal it is, the more difficult it is, the more friction, right? The more body that's in your way. So instead of just trying to pull, I mean, students all over the, the world, the country are doing this, they have, I see it everywhere. Instead of pulling the knee up, just put the foot on the floor. You're gonna escape the hip, like a basic shrimping kind of, kind of maneuver here. And once it's, your hip escapes, you could do a few more if you need to, then the angle becomes very easy. And the angle I have on my partner is much better, so I can attack actually. Okay, so we've got this false grip. Notice how I'm, this is the false grip again, outside arm, false grip on the outside of the triceps. We don't want to be cross-faced, uh, your face, your neck, whatever, okay? That is like one of my least favorite. I'm sure it's your least favorite uh, ways to spend time in jiu-jitsu. And so instead of spending your day like this, instead, watch. As soon as I put the grip in and tuck my elbow as tight as possible, if I can get my elbow inside, that's even better. And you try that with your partner, okay? I'm going to show some private lesson footage at the end of before and after so you can see the difference. Um, but it makes a significant difference. Have your partner give you the cross face when you have your hands pushing his neck and then do it again when you have the false grip over the outside of the shoulder or the back of the triceps like I'm recommending. Again, not pushing with your arms, not with hands like this. That is going to get you in trouble. Here, tucking in, false grip. Now the foot's higher than the knee. The knee slips into the connect with the elbow, trap the first leg. Now my foot's on the floor so I can post it and get a nice angle when I get to close guard. I'm already on the offense again. Okay, so I've got that false grip on the outside arm. My other elbow is going to be tucked in, so the near elbow is just going to be inside the hip. We don't really need the near elbow to be pushing that much. It's just sort of keeping us safe from the mount and safe from maybe you know some attacks on the near side. So in this case, my left elbow is not as important as my um, for pushing. It's the outside elbow that's going to be here. All right, this good, this good hand and elbow placement also makes any bridging you need to do much stronger, okay? Much easier to get your hips away. Again, if I start pushing here, watch this. I'm going to ask my partner here to follow my hips. And when I just have this, you know, pushing on the throat or uh, hands near the neck type of maneuver, uh, no matter how, you know, violently you think you might do it, they can just turn their head or follow their hips. When I get this correct position, he's going to do the exact same thing, but he cannot go through the bone of my elbow. So there, I've caught the first foot, second foot goes to the floor, escape the hips at a nice angle, and I'm on offense. So I want to have this foot higher than the knee. I want to have my elbow tucked in as best I can, connecting the knee and elbow. And I'm using a false grip over the triceps and your arm. So again, we're going to go into a little more detail here on that lower half. So... I want the foot higher than the knee initially, and then the knee is going to go in at the crease of the hip, where the hip and the, the thigh and the hip and the torso come together there. So I need the foot higher than the knee, and as I escape the hip, there's a little bit of a twist where my, my toes are going to start pointing towards his feet. Notice how with, with this positioning, with my elbow tucked in and my leg in the air like this, I can feel right away if he tries to mount and I can 
immediately start connecting knee and elbow and prevent the mount here if I'm you know, doing it. So my knee slips in, the toes are starting to point towards his foot. I don't want to stay in this position where I'm, my toes are pointed perpendicular, right? My, 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 the line of my foot here would be perpendicular to his body. It starts to point down, connecting the knee and elbow at an angle. Okay, there's the position. We're going to switch to the next one. So elbows inside, knees inside. I connect. I'm going to have my partner raise up. Look at this V. That's the angle we're looking for, the V right here. The foot is higher than the knee. The other hand, one, the hand is higher than the, the elbow. So that's connected right there. I'm trying to connect those two at this sort of angle. I do not want a horizontal arms. Okay, so outside arm, false grip, elbows tucked, inside elbows, inside. I connect the knee and elbow, and that's where we start our escape. So now we're going to put all this together in um, some private lesson footage with a before and after. So here's um, one of the great students, um, awesome fighters here. He's, he's a really good purple belt. And um, Dante is demonstrating here the position where we just basic, you know, your basic shrimp. So I'm saying, let me see how you shrimp and get your knees back in. And a lot of times I notice in all my lessons that people struggle with getting this foot across. Even here in this clip, you'll see sometimes your foot will get stuck in the, uh, in the clothing like this. And it's very annoying. So what do we want to do instead? Same things we talked about before. Let's put it all together and watch. Watch uh, Dante is a great athlete. He's a great fighter. So he's going to pick up on this and he'll be doing it better than me probably tomorrow. So yeah, I've got the false grip. Elbows inside. Makes a big difference. When both elbows are inside position here. My foot goes higher than the knee. My hips start to escape away. Connect my knee and elbow. Look how I trapped the first foot. Once I trap the first leg, now the foot can move on and, and I can go to the second leg. Okay, and boom, get a nice angle. So here we are demonstrating. One of the other good black belts here is helping me out at the uh, Mendoza Lotus Club and they're helping me demonstrate. My elbow's tucked in really good. This is a strong position. I have that false grip, elbow's tucked in, the foot higher than the knee, inside elbow's just blocking just in case they try something. And I can slowly escape my hips or f fastly, <laughs> slowly, it doesn't really matter. The positioning is going to make you efficient. And that's really what jujitsu is about is being efficient, right? Because... If the guy tries to mount, you can connect the knee and elbow, and it just puts you in such a, a more comfortable position than trying to use your triceps and so much energy to escape where you're just forcing it all the time. Knee and elbow connected. Now I go to connect and trap that first foot. I'm sort of pushing out so I can trap the first foot. Once the knee penetrates, now I can bring the foot across, the knee across, and I keep escaping the hips, escaping the hips, escaping the hips, and get a nice close guard position. All right. Now, Dante's still having the trouble here in the video. He's, the shin was going horizontal. This was uh, the other week. So that's what we're talking about again. When the shin is horizontal, what are some of the problems with that? Um, someone like myself, I love passing guard with, when the, with the shin trapped horizontally. So I like to like make my opponents very tired there if I'm on the top position. So naturally, we don't want to do that if we're on the bottom position. So I'm going to have him move a little bit here. You guys can see how, look how easy it is for me just to follow and keep that shin trapped so it's harder for him. I, I would never want to be back in close guard, right? So I would just follow him. Also, some you're kind of exposed to leg locks if somebody is, likes to do leg locks quite a bit. Okay, so we don't want to have that shin horizontal. We're trying to get it more vertical or V-shaped here. So as I bring the knee in, get everything in position, knee and elbow connect, and look, I've got that V-shape. You can see it again here. There it is. Knee and elbow are connected, foot higher than the knee still. Hand is higher than the elbow. There's this V-shape. There's no gaps between it. And that will, that will keep you um, safe from near side attacks. Safer anyway, right? You can only be so safe when you're training. But it keeps you safer from those attacks. And it also uh, makes it harder for your leg to get stuck. All right? So, again, I'm starting to escape the hip. My knee comes in. Boom. Look how I push his leg. I use the knee. Once the knee's inside, I'm going to use that leg to push his leg toward my other foot. So I'm asking the camera around here to go around to the side so you can see the leg work a little closer here. As I push his leg outward, in this case, my, my right foot is in the air. Look, it's waiting to catch. There's the catch. I catch that first leg. So once I catch it, now the foot that we put in, the knee that we put in initially was a V. Now it doesn't have to do that job anymore because I've captured this first leg. So I don't have to worry about that leg, um, you know, trapping me anymore. So now the foot can go to the floor. I just have to move a little bit, 
there, just that little bit of motion. Now the foot's on the floor and I can start shrimping on the other side. So now I'm gonna be shrimping in the opposite direction. Once I capture the first leg, the direction of my hips is gonna to start to, to change. I capture the first leg, my knee now penetrated on the far side of the hip. So I'm all the way to the other side of his body. All right, so I was in that V grip, that V angle. We're raising up a little bit so you guys can really see the angle, the details. Look, as I push the first leg, capture it and now I can plant the foot on the floor. As soon as it's planted on the floor, look, my knee came across to the far side of the hip and now it's it's gonna be the opposite. Instead of trying to pull that knee out, which is always difficult, I'm just, I'm being a little dramatic, it's funny, but don't try to pull this knee out. Don't do this. I see students all day trying to get this foot up. Put it on the floor, plant the foot and just do the basic shrimp in the opposite direction. Now look, plant, escape the hip, escape the hip, extend your hips and shrimp, extend shrimp, extend shrimp, and you'll get an excellent angle, all right? So now we're gonna demo all these things together. There's the, there's kind of the wrong way. I, so, so we say, here, get that false grip, tuck the elbow in and feel the difference. So I'm gonna give him as much pressure. I have pretty good pressure on side control, um, as, as I'm told, and I'm really trying to put some pressure here, but when he has that grip, really the elbow's tucked in, I really cannot put enough pressure on it. Look, if it puts the wrong position, it's easy for me to move it out of the way, okay? It's easy for me to, to just cross-face him or get that elbow out of the way. So now he's got the right position. It's very difficult. I'm telling him, man, I cannot. It's going to hurt my, my chest or it's hurt my, my torso trying to push through that elbow. The other elbow's inside. Get this foot in the air, so I'm trying to talk him through it. The outside foot goes down. The inside foot goes up in the air. He escapes the hips. And as he does, he's going to start to get the connection of that knee and elbow. Boom, there's the first one. Now he's going to use that first leg to push my leg, uh, my right leg in this case. He's going to push that leg towards his other foot. Boom, trap. So he's got one leg trapped. So we're halfway there. He's got like a half guard here, sort of a half guard. Now he can pull that foot to the floor. He's still a little bit stuck. Put it, I'm telling him, put it on the floor. There it is. Now once on the floor, now he can escape his hips in the opposite direction. He still has that false grip on my shoulder triceps. And that's that becomes useful now for counterattacking whatever else. So all together, watch how he does it all together. Elbows in, foot is up, elbows inside, both elbows are in, the foot comes in, traps the first foot. Now the leg moves on to the second job. Immediate, man, he's going to be super good at this. I can tell because it took me like several years to get that good. Um, thanks to Dante, thanks to Juan P and all the uh, students and other instructors here helped me to make these videos while I'm traveling and visiting Mendoza, Argentina. If you guys want to come train, for sure, just send me a message and come train. We can give you guys a great uh, training camp or whatever that you want to do. You can visit out here. Tourism, wine, mountain climbing. Um, and, of course, I just like to train jiu-jitsu, so that's what I'm doing. Thanks, everybody. Let me know what you think. Uh, yeah.